us on more than we currently do. Alright? Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord, everybody. Alright. Ezekiel was a really strange guy. But he's one of the most powerful prophets. And what God did to him, when he started to see visions at first, he saw the visions of God, and God showed him the scroll, which is like a Bible, the book, and he had to eat it. And when he ate it, physically ate, when he physically ate the scroll, he said it was, uh, it was sweet to the taste, but inside it was bitter. So the Word of God is like that. When the Word of God comes to change your life, it's exciting at first. But when you eat it, it becomes almost boring, or it becomes tiring, or it becomes laboring, it becomes those sort of things. But if you stick to it, stay with God on the things He's showing you, talk to us the leadership if you receive visions and things because we will guide you so you don't go off on a tangent and yeah. make a big big mistake like a lot of Christians do. We, we're here, we're wise leaders and we are experiential leaders and we know if you have a vision talk to me about it. Uh, is there anyone ever, don't have to put your hands up, I'm not asking for that, but as people come and ask me about a vision and I never knock you down. I never bring you, oh, that's not of God. I don't do that. We test it. Yes. We teach you how to test it. And you will know if it's from God or not after it is tested. Yes. Amen. So everyone say test. Test the vision. Yes. So Ezekiel saw visions of God. And he uh, eventually, God told him, Ezekiel, now I hope I got the right prophet. I think I'm correct. If I'm not on We'll live with it. But you understand, if I got the wrong prophet, it's fine. I think I got the right prophet. And God told him, Ezekiel, I want you to lay down on your side for 365 days. If I got the numbers right. It's a lot of days. It was not 100. And it was more than 200. And he had to lay it on his side. He couldn't get up and go to the toilet. He had to do everything there. Because God was changing him. Amen. God was turning him. Amen. And was going to make him into a greater prophet. Yeah. That's why we have the book of Ezekiel. He knew the spirit. I believe he was looked after by people. And, but he had to lay there on his side. He was not allowed to turn. And God filled them with spirit and power, knowledge and abilities. Praise the Lord. You can read the story yourself. It's there. And it will surprise you what God does to people, uh, Sophie's and Bishop. How God grabs us from our youth and how we've changed and how we've developed over a period of time, not knowing that we were going to end up like this. Yes. Yes. Amen. Not knowing that a demon could come and I would just bang, lash it like that and it has to leave. When the first time I met a demon, I ran four miles, screaming on the road, Jesus, help us, two of us. We went to help someone in a car park. The man was possessed with a demon. It was a trick. The Queen's Park Station. It was never a car park. So my friend and I, I'm not going to call his name this time, because I'm not here to dishonor him. But we went down and we're helping him. I'm a new convert. And this voice came out, you are both under my power. And when that was said, it gripped us. And my my brother who was in the Lord longer, he said, in the name of Jesus, and we ran. We ran all the way up Harvest Road. We ran all the way to Queen's Park, uh, no, Castle Green Station, 
and we ran all the way up College Road and we went to his house. We we're running from the devil. And guess what happened? This man was running all the way behind us. He ran the four miles. We were scared out of our wits. And finally before, in those days, you, not all houses had telephones. Don't talk about mobiles, they didn't exist. So we went into the phone booth, the red one, like uh, Doctor Who. You know? In we go, and we called up our bishop, the general superintendent. Because he was our first pastor in that part of London. And he said, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. And he prayed for us on the phone. That's what I mean. I was in, I, 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 I mean, we were speaking in tongues. I wasn't yet, but I was, I was faithful to God. But we couldn't handle the devil. We, we, we ran and the thing was we screamed. Jesus, the blood of Jesus. And these two 18 year olds, you know, we think we're full of God. But when you meet the devil, my friends, you're going to run. Until the Holy Ghost came in my life. And even then, I was still running. I'm not going to be big in front of you. I'm being honest. We still would run. I'm now 20. We'll say the name of Jesus and keep saying it until the devil backs up. But we don't have any authority yet. Authority comes later. That's why you're in the church. The covering of the church protects you. Protects you. The covering comes from God first and the leadership, and it protects you. Amen. 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 All right. Let's tell you a bit more funny. This is worth saying. The day came. I'm in church now two years. Going to prayer meeting three times a week. Why was I going to prayer meeting three times a week? And others were going to prayer meeting one time a week. We were young kids, still, you know, not married yet, but three times a week we're going for prayer. Summer holidays, we pray, go to pray. We pray two hours and off we go. And we're out there. But the day came. In a certain home that I was at, there was a man who was a lodger. And there was a scream upstairs. There was no pastor with me, no elder, nobody. And they came running down at the house and saying, The devil's in him, the devil's in him, the devil's in him. Now it's a house that I frequent. It was my parents' house. And the man, so I ran upstairs, different now. Different. Everyone say different. I didn't, I did not know I was different. But when I got upstairs, I was different. It's all the prayers you see. That's why we keep you praying. That's why we keep you fasting, because we know that we are building you up. Yeah. Making you solid soldiers who can fight any situation. Yeah. So I ran up the step. Now listen, last time I was running down the road. Now I'm running up the stairs. I hear the roaring and the voice of the devil up there. The one I heard two years before. I was not afraid of it this time. I went in and I said to the lady, what's going on? He said, look at him. He's kissing, he's kissing a paraffin heater. The paraffin heater? You don't know what a paraffin heater, what can I think of? Like a cooking thing, like say it's got gas flames. Oh, that's the only way I can explain it. And it's in a upright heater to warm up the room. 
The demon in him was talking and he was putting his lips on the top of the heater at full blast in the winter. And it was not burning the man up. All I heard was the voices. And I came up, I walked into the room, I said, in the name of Jesus, come out of him. I don't know where the voice came from. I've never spoke like that before. It's not our voice. There's a voice beyond our voice. It's the rivers of living water. It is the rivers that flow out of our babies. Give the Lord praise, everyone. So our subject today is more than a drink. It's not just a drink we get. It's more than a drink. Amen. It's a staged more than a drink. Amen. So as you open your heart and you're listening, I can feel your listening, I can feel your heart. You are receiving. You are receiving greater faith. You are receiving greater power. Amen. 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 All right, let me be quick with you and calm down. And I'd like you to come those who still want more of the Holy Spirit, even if you're speaking in tongues, you still come and seek more of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It doesn't mean that because you speak in tongues, I don't need to seek God anymore. It's about seeking God constantly. You're in His presence. Keep seeking Him because God is engineering a power in you that will blast any power of the enemy and open doors for you. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I put my hands together for those of you who are getting new jobs and new employments and promotions. Since the day we said we are giving an, our offering, a special offering, we're not here talking about offering, we're explaining that that word came from God. Amen. Because it's overturned the elements of poverty that people are going through. Amen. Amen. So, <clears throat> Ezekiel now is mature. I'm not sure how many years he's been in a secret place with God. But being with God in the secret place of the Most High, he is a different man. He would lay down for, with God on the floor five years now. He don't care. He knows that while he was laying there, God was getting him to submit. Amen. God was getting him to allow God to permeate. That means go through all of his sinew, his heart, his brain, his style, his thinking, his his imagination and everything was now becoming filled with Almighty God. Amen. And because of that, God could trust him. Yeah. You see, my days on the home, as I remember the old Christian days, and there are people who really believe in the Great Commission. I believe in the Great Commission, and we must win souls. Amen. But there were people that just felt they were better than those who went to church. Oh, we're out there. We're going to be preaching the gospel. Yeah, we're, pre we're preaching, we're preaching, we're preaching, we're preaching, we're preaching. But there was no building in there. And the people in churches have to also go out and win the laws. They've got to have that balance. But we have people, you know, will say, oh, you hi guys, meet some guys on the street. Where, where are you going? You're Christian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Christians. So what are you doing? Oh, we're going, to, we're going to Liverpool. We're going to up there in the bridge. We're going to preach. I said, so where do you preach? Where? No, I'm 18. And I have enough sensibilities at 18 that one has to be trained. Amen. You don't get lost of amen on that. You have to be trained. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to put you in the plane and tell you to fly until you 
been trained. I will not be your passenger in your plane. I will not go. I, I, I need somebody with 15, 20 years of training. They know what a dive is. They know when one engine stops. They know how still to control the plane. They know if a rudder, a piece of the rudder, the, the directional thing falls off, they can still maneuver that plane and bring it safe to land at the airport. Yeah. Amen. 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 But imaginary people think they can just do things because they feel they're gifted. Yeah. Your gift is not the power. Yeah. The gift is the Lord's power. Amen. But it has to train us how to do things. Amen. That is the purpose of a church and a ministry. Hallelujah. Amen. So Ezekiel is now mature. He's different now. He's gone through the stages of training. And watch what he says. <clears throat> he was in a vision in Ezekiel 47. And here we are back to the waters of God. Similar to what Jesus was talking about. But Ezekiel has a great revelation as to the stages of development of the Holy Spirit in people's lives. You don't just speak in tongues and then next, or you start off, you can't do that in studies, can you? You do your A levels, your O levels, you get your degree. You don't get a doctorate next week. Right. It can't be. There's a whole heap of information in the middle that's been missed. And that person will become a destroyer. Yeah. Because they will teach people the wrong way of doing things. Yeah. Praise the Lord. You, I'm not going to allow anybody who might be studying dentistry to go into my mouth. With a drill, with all these other things, they'll tell me I need an extraction, but a senior dentist will say, no, you just need a slight root canal. So advice and advice must be from those who have been trained. Hallelujah. Well, Apostle, where have you been trained? I'll tell you that another day. I've been betraying a lot of places. But more importantly, by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now it says here, verse 1, I'll just gloss over. Uh, Ezekiel is talking because he's in one of his visions. And sometimes you get people who see visions a lot, and there's a prejudice against people that get visions. If you're one who gets visions and you share your visions, there's often a prejudice against it. People smile with you and say, well, well, well done. And they turn their back and they feel different. And you have to be aware of that, that particular process. And don't let it stop you. It will not let it stop me. Amen. I'm going to say, I will not let it stop me. God is, de God is developing, He's developing me at the moment. And I'm going to stay with the Lord. And I will not allow anyone, anyone to take me and pull me in their direction astray from the calling, from the calling of the Holy Ghost. I will not allow anyone to change me. Stay with the Lord, everybody. Stay with the Lord. Hallelujah, stay with the Lord. Right, in verse 2, that's worth reading. This is Ezekiel. He says, He's saying that the Spirit of God, He brought me out of the way of a gate. Northward led me about the way. King James is a little bit hard to read after me. But he, what he's saying that He went to like the threshold of a big house. And so he was taken to this particular gate on the north side. And when he looked in 
And by the way, he looks eastward, and there ran out waters, a river. The river was really wonderful to look at, I presume. Verse 3 says, and when the man that had the line, there was a man who had a measuring tape. The measuring tape, everyone say measuring. Measure. See, whatever we do for God, there was a measuring, we're being measured. When we stand before the throne and receive our rewards, there'll be different measurements for all of us. There's always a measuring going on. And, and so this measurement was taking place. And he says, and when, verse 3, when the man that had the line in his hand went forth eastward, he measured a thousand cubits. So in other words, it's like if I have the end of the measurement and the person in the back says to Chantel, and I'll hold the line, so here come here. And the waters are getting slowly and slowly deeper, 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 deeper. It says that the first experience of what term, I would term to be the Holy Spirit. When someone speaks in tongues, I would interpret that to say that. It says here, he measured a thousand cubits, brought me through the waters, and the waters were at my ankles. So when, I'm saying this because something happened a few weeks ago. When I was on the this morning, the Lord reminded me how he filled me with the Holy Spirit. I had trouble speaking in tongues for one year and four months. It didn't work. I gave up. I was going to leave church. But God didn't allow that to happen. Amen. He filled me with his Holy Spirit. And you know what was amazing? And this happened the other day at church with someone else. The first thing God did, I felt his Spirit come on me, suddenly, as I was worshipping. And the Spirit of the Lord went down to my feet first. He went to my feet and I began to shake. I went to my feet and I began to dance. I was always against dancing in the church. Me, dancing, never. So God fixed my prejudice. And he went down to my feet and my feet were just dancing and fluttering around. I couldn't stop. And then I felt his spirit went, he poured it up. God was pouring in into a glass. And he, the, oh, the anointing went into my knees, up my legs, up my body, up here, right to my neck, and then out of my mouth when I'm going to speak in tongues. This is a scripture. It may not happen in your this way for you, but listen very carefully. He says, I went down a thousand cubits. A cubit is from the tip of your middle finger to your elbow. That's between 18, maybe 24 inches, call it two feet, 18 inches, that's a cubit. A thousand of those, so that's the, the length that one has to walk with God, and you're ankle deep in Christianity, but you've got to keep walking. And you go 500, well, nothing much is happening in my life, keep walking, keep walking. Keep walking, keep walking, because when you keep walking, you're going to go into the next stage of the power of the Holy Spirit. You have to keep walking. Everyone say, keep walking. Keep walking. All right, so it's ankle deep. In verse 4, the gaming measured a thousand and brought me through the waters, and the waters were to the knees. Someone say to the knees. What are the knees used for in our process of Christianity? What do we do? If we're going to get our first degree, what do we get our degree in? They call it neology. So you're going to learn how to pray. That's why God touches your knees. So that we go on our knees before God daily to talk to Him. Praise the Lord. 
Praise the Lord. Not in this. I'm, I'm, I'm going to. Everyone used to. I used to do. I used to, I used to pray in bed. Everyone used to pray in bed. Well, may the Lord, Lord Jesus, thank you, Jesus, for today. Give me a good day tomorrow, Lord. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Go to sleep. No, you get out and you go on your knees and you pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth. And you talk to God like that. He's your best friend, you know. Who believes that Jesus is your best friend? He's my best friend. There's no other. Hallelujah. Right, let me move on quick. And he measured me, and it was to the knees. A little later on, this is verse 4. Again, he measured another thousand, brought me through the waters, but now it was in my loins. Around the waist, the loins are looked upon in the area also of reproduction. The Apostle Paul said that we, when we tithed, he said, Melchizedek tithed, um, Abraham tithed to Melchizedek. Praise the Lord. And the scripture says that we were in Abraham. We, so the loins means the reproduction, the body, the torso here, the, the, uh, the organs, the vital organs were also in this area that God is bringing healing, is bringing change to the vital organs of our body. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So he says the waters was up to his loins. Thank you, Jesus. To the chest area. To reproduction. Because if we tithe, in the tithe teaching, and I'm not teaching tithe today, it means that when you give your tithe, you're doing like Abraham tithe to Melchizedek, who was king of kings, lord of lords, having no uh, record of his mother or his dad or anything like that, but he, he was the king of Salem. So when we give our tithes, we're doing the same. But we're not tithing just to a church, we're tithing to God. We're tithing in the same format that the blessings of Abraham will come upon us. The Bible says, for Abraham was very, very rich in, in herds, in cattle, and various things. But he didn't start out rich, it's because he served God. Someone say amen. amen. All right. Now, so to his waist, verse 5 says, After he measured me a thousand, and it was a river that I could not pass over. For the waters were risen, waters to swim in. So the feet are off the ground. They are now trusting the river of God. The church here is going to experience the river of God. The river of God. The river will flow outside the doors here into the, the evangelism that we're going to do. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. That is very much on the cards. God is working through this principle. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So he was now fully covered. And then the Lord said, and he said to me, son of man, Hast thou seen this? Then he brought me and caused me to return. I've never seen this before. He brought me to return. Everyone say return. return. See, returning is very important. Because yeah. sometimes we start somewhere and we don't realize how much we've, we have meandered in our brains. Yeah. Our physical bodies are here. But in our inner spirits that meandered, yeah. we're all about it. Because the world is evil now. Yeah. And church is not defined properly anymore. Yeah. Things are going on that is mixing up the heads of people's minds. Yeah. We call you into divine order. Yeah. We call your mind to know God for yourself. 
but not from a proudful situation. Because many people, I know God for myself, I know where God is taking me. And you see them 10 years, where are they? I can tell you hundreds and hundreds of those cases. Where are they now? You understand? So there is a course that God has for his people that he's developing us in these latter times. Because let me tell you something. In the latter times, the things are shifting and the deception level is very high and very smart. But the Holy Spirit in your life will pick up. Pick it up. You don't know why God's talking to you, but the Holy Spirit will pick it up. And that will balance you out and keep you safe. Hallelujah. Now, he says you have to return. So returning is not a failure. He had to go back to where he began when he entered the water in the beginning and it was at his ankle. So sometimes God says, I want you going back to restart. Yeah. Well, may God, restarting, what for? I've restarted a hundred times and it doesn't work. God says restart again. Amen. Get back to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's the place you started. Keep the Holy Spirit welling up in you. When the altars are called, so what you spoke in tongues for 20, 20 minutes last week. You come and you do your 25 minutes in tongues. Or whatever it is, you keep returning. And the reason you keep returning because there is a blessing at when you restart. This is what happened to Ezekiel now. Ezekiel says he returned. And once they returned, Verse 7, now when I return, behold, that means he's really got his eyes open and he's looking around. He says, behold, at the bank of the river were many trees. There were no trees there when he left a while ago. No record of it. On one side and the other. Then said he unto me, these waters issue out towards the east country and go down into the desert and go into the sea, which being brought forth into the sea, the waters shall be healed. So he's saying by returning, the waters are not just there to let him walk through and flow, they're now bringing the healing into the other nations, the healing into the other regions. He's talking that from that particular perspective. And then he goes on, he says, and it shall come to pass. This is God speaking now, because he says, it shall come to pass that everything that lives, which moves, whatsoever, whithersoever the rivers shall come, shall live. There shall be a very great multitude of fish. That's the souls. That's the great commission. That is the souls of men being one beyond just the one and the twos or the tens and the twenties. See, the key to growth is the empowerment and the soaking of the Holy Spirit. He that hungers and thirsts after righteousness shall be filled. You must hunger. Praise the Lord. You must hunger and thirst. These rivers shall come, it says in verse 9. There shall be a very great multitude of fish. That's the unsaved people. Jesus called his disciples, I will make you fishes of men. Our job here is to win the hundreds, the thousands, and the tens of thousands, and the hundreds of thousands for Jesus. But we have to have the flow. We have to have the flow. We have to have the flow. Come on now. Come on now. Praise the Lord. It says, for they shall be healed. The healing ministry will step up and everything shall live 
Wherever the river comes, so Jesus says out of your belly will flow rivers of living water that people around you will want to, to sup up and drink of that which you possess in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. It says, for they shall be healed and everything shall live with it. the river comes and goes. And it shall come to pass that the fishes shall stand upon it from Engedi even unto Enlaim. There shall be a place to spread forth nets. Jesus says to the disciples, cast your nets. Cast your nets. In Luke chapter 5. Peter, cast all, all your nets over the side of the ship. He says, yes, Lord, I'll do it for you with joy. How many nets did he throw? One. King James says one. New King James will say he threw the nets. It's not right. He, he threw one net. Jesus says, throw all the nets, you fishermen. And they're out there thinking, what does he know about nets? Maybe some of you think like that about me. I don't know. What does he, what does he know about fishing? What does he know? And they're saying that, well, my, my, my dad was a fisherman. My great dad, granddad was a fisherman, and this Jesus, although I love him, he said, throw with all the nets over. We're not going to catch anything. We've been toiling all night. And what happened? They threw one net and their net broke. Praise the Lord. The net broke because they weren't really listening. They forgot who was talking to them. It's not me talking to you. It's the Holy Spirit talking to you. It's not Keith McLeod speaking to you. It is the Holy Spirit. If you will grab the Holy Spirit because Peter messed up. And he said, yes, Lord, I found the net. He's a liar. He lied to Jesus. And sometimes we speak, we're hearing God, we're not hearing, we, we're hearing ourselves. And we need to be hearing what Jesus is truly saying. And the Bible says what happened? The, the, the net was over, over full and it broke. And because of that, Peter lost ministry. And we don't listen, we lose ministry. People say, well, the church should be full up and all this. And that church over there should be full up. And that pastor's church should be full up. And we should, we should be overflowing. But people are not listening to instruction. Yeah. So Peter's net got filled up but it busted. Yeah, and it, all the fish were over there. What does the next verse say in the Bible? It says that the partners came. Yes. The other churches came. And they raped the fish. So we have to make sure, as the disciples would do with their nets, it says they would mend their nets. They would clean their nets. The nets have to be cleaned. And you can't have someone cleaning with a dirty hand. And they got a dirty hand cleaning. They, they, they're messing it more up. Best they left it as it was. We have to have clean hands. And that's why the Holy Spirit comes, because he's fire. Yes. John the Baptist said, listen, there's one coming greater than I, whose shoes are not worthy to untie. He's coming with a fan in his hand, and he's going to blow this thing to another level. The prophets have done the best they can, and you've killed them all. But I, that Jesus who came as a prophet and an apostle and as the son of God, he came with great power and he was able to overturn these things. John said, I am not worthy to even touch your shoelaces. But who was Jesus? 
is the Son of God. Where is he living? Inside your mortal body. Through the Holy Spirit of God is in there. And we must listen carefully. Careful listening is the key. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Everyone say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It says the fish and their fish shall come according to their kinds and they will spread forth nets. In verse 10. But 11 says, but the miry places, the muddy places, thereof and the, the marshes thereof shall not be healed. They shall be given to salt. So from this church, MCCI, we are not in the muddy places. We are not in the, the marshland. We're in the place where the Holy Spirit is the focus. Amen. The focus of the Holy Spirit is in this place. Amen. Holy Ghost, we welcome you. Amen. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We want more of you. Amen. So that's where, when, how did I grow in the Lord? Was I speaking in tongues every week? Three, four times a day? I was not a preacher or anything. I was not designing that. But how did I become a preacher? I don't know how it would be. I was not planning for it. But I was always at the altar. When they said, let's pray, you see me coming down, I'm coming down. I'm usually always third row. I'm out here. Hands up. Give me some more. Hallelujah. Anoint me, amen. Let me. Let me be slain, amen. Whatever it is, I don't care. I just want more. I want, I'm like a fish. And that is the attitude of growth. Amen. Now, if you don't come forward, that's your choice. But I'm just saying every week, please, come and be filled again. Be refilled again. Because the filling is not capacity. It's not like putting water in a glass. It's the density, so if I have been and I put a bit in water, it will go light pink, pinky red. But after a while, you just keep adding, it goes, looks violet, it looks like a plum, dark, it's dense. Amen. So when I have the Holy Spirit and it's light, and the devil comes, We'll have a fight and a tussle, but it's going to be hard to get rid of him. Because he knows I'm not compacted with the energy of the Holy Spirit in terms of density. So at prayer time, go to the front. If we've got prayer in the back, go to the front. Whatever, just keep coming to the front. Because the front of the house is close to the altar of God. Where the Ark of the Covenant is. Let's get in close there rather than be at the perimeter. perimeter. That's it. Amen. That's it. Amen. The Lord just wanted me to explain. Yeah. So that preaching sometimes we, we can get lost in it because it's so happy, happy, clappy, and we get lost in that and you, you say what did we what was the message today? Oh, can't think, can't remember. Do you know, we can't work it out. But we had a great time. But sometimes we need to know yeah. the purpose why we're here. Amen. We're going to have world evangelism out there. Amen. City evangelism. But that comes first that we have fullness of God. All my life he's been faithful. All my life all my life he's never failed me one time single day. I've had 
days where I was quite early you know, when I was young, I questioned God, how come God? Yeah. I'm going to make you laugh because I stepped down and I hand back to selfish ambition. I hope you could call people just for a gathering prayer. That would be nice. When I first got saved, that means gave my life to Jesus. I lived near Kensal Green Station and I worked in Barclays Bank. As Tom called word, so we'd get the fast train, no it wasn't, it was a slow train from there all the way to Houston. And just sprint all the way down Tom Court Road, I did that every day. But there were some times I overslept. And I knew the time on the train. Remember, I'm a new convert. It was a new convert. I'm born again, what, three months, six months? So every time I prayed, God would, God would answer. So I'm late. I said, Jesus, please, I can't afford to be late at work. Or oh, the shift leader, I was a shift leader, he's going to tell me off like he did last week. So I'm praying, Jesus, please. And there, I'm running down, I've got my ticket, and there the train is late, staying on the, the platform there, and I'm running, I'm running, open the door, I'm in. And I did that, I think, a good ten times. And then, I remember the night, the night for some time, it happened again. I was always late. And there was a train, because I knew, I prayed, and that's the power of my God, I'm thinking. And it was him, and he really thought he was going to teach me that. So I ran down, and now this last train, as I get into it, it's moving off, but I'm quick. I open the door, and I'm running, and in I dive. Dangerous, but that's what I did. Next time I was late, there's the train, and I'm running down, and I'm about 30 feet where the Southern Bishop is, and it's taking off. And did I learn from that? No. I was late again, and I had the same experience, the train disappearing. And I complained to my Christian buddy, I had a buddy who looked after me. I said, why that happened? He says, the Lord is, he was helping you as a new convert at first. He didn't answer any, any prayer you make, but after a while, he's going to stop it. Because he wants you to mature. And you get up early, yeah, and you go to the station and you wait there half an hour for the train to come and it's cold and it will arrive and you'll get to work on time. And that's what God is trying to do with all of us to take us out of the baby stages of Christianity. You've got to stand for yourself. You've got to know how to fight for yourself. You've got to know how to overcome for yourself. You can't lean on each other. Although we are together, we're leaning together. But when you're on your own, you've got to know how to battle. And you've got to know how to fight. And you've got to know how to draw your soul. And destroy your enemies. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen.
Thank you, Jesus. We're trying to close. We're trying to close. Jesus. Jesus.